With the strikes over, we've got another trailer to analyze, so let's get to it. First thing we see here is the Ancient Greek Museum of Art, and a scene with young Percy and Sally, where she takes him to see the statue of Perseus, his namesake, for the first time. We also have an adorable shot of Sally talking to young Percy here, telling him all about his namesake. That he was brave, selfless, and most importantly, he was one of the only ancient Greek heroes who got a happy ending. This next shot here, I initially thought was the trio wandering through the woods, but after watching the rest of the trailer, I'm thinking this is them wandering through the underworld, most likely Asphodel. This next shot is Percy at camp packing up some blue food to go to the Poseidon cabin for the first time after he's been claimed. The next shot we see here, I can't quite identify. Yes, it's clearly Grover getting dragged away, and this is probably just the flying shoes dragging him into the deepest part of the underworld, but it looks awfully bright compared to the other shots we've seen of the underworld, so is this actually at a beach? Put your guesses in the comments. Next shot here is clearly a POV of Percy falling out of the St. Louis Arch after Echidna forced him out. Next thing we see is Percy running through the woods, except he has his armor and his shield and his sword, so I'm guessing that this is Capture the Flag, even though it looks like he's lost his helmet. This next shot I cannot quite identify. Is it after the car crashed, during the Minotaur attack, or is it after Percy fell out of the St. Louis Arch and into the water? Again, put your thoughts in the comments. This next shot is clearly Percy during the fight with the Minotaur, watching his mother presumably die. And he is not happy about that. So we finally cut to the first chapter of the book, with Percy and Grover on the field trip to the Ancient Greek Museum of Art. And Percy's getting harassed by Nancy Boba Fett. Something I'd like to draw attention to in these shots here is the attention to detail. Grover and this girl in the background are wearing shirts that clearly say Yancey Academy for Troubled Kids, which is the school that Percy was intending in the books. With that, Percy finally returns to the statue from the opening shot, except this time he's taking notes on it for an assignment. And we see his handwriting isn't the best and his dyslexia is still causing him quite a bit of trouble. Of course, Percy notices something is up as he sees what's clearly a Pegasus, most likely Blackjack, on the top of a roof. But it takes him by surprise since he doesn't understand how the world works just yet. Now here we have what looks like an interesting change from the books. We see Mr. Brunner, who is actually Chiron, handing Percy Riptide before he gets attacked. Did he know that Miss Dodds was actually a Fury the whole time? Here we see Percy holding Riptide, except it looks like it might have been uncapped, so it's probably about to turn into its sword form. Next scene here is Sally telling Percy the truth, which is presumably taking place in their home just before they leave for the Minotaur attack. Next shot we see is clearly Ares on the beach, and thanks to the sky that we're going to be seeing elsewhere in the trailer, this is most likely the Ares fight at the end of the season. We're then treated to do a couple shots of Greek monsters, those being Medusa and Cerberus. In the Cerberus shot, we can see his three heads as well as a red ball that Percy is presumably using to try and get past him by treating him like a regular dog and Cerberus isn't really taking it too well. Finally, getting back to Percy's reaction, he says, this is crazy, and you know what? He's right. Next shot, and we finally get to see a bit more of the camp. We see Zeus's cabin, Poseidon's cabin, and Ares's cabin, as well as signs pointing to Demeter and Athena's cabins. Now, this is another point where I'd like to call out the attention to detail. This is their exact layout from the books. Nice touch. Next couple shots are Percy getting bullied, and it's not by Clarice, oddly enough. So is this after he was claimed as a child of the Big Three? Next few shots we see are definitely during the Minotaur attack. Grover warning Percy, and the Minotaur finally showing up. Percy sees the Minotaur, and car crash! We cut back to camp with a scene on the coast, and some canoes, and what looks to be banners for each of the cabins in the background. And we return to Percy going into the Poseidon cabin. Looks like they're not keeping his parentage a secret. I mean, it's not like they could at this point with the trident imagery that's been all over the logo. Next scene here is clearly Olympus and Percy meeting Poseidon for the first time. Though there are some changes from the books, like the thrones are all stone instead of being specifically tailored to each god. Also, Poseidon doesn't have his Hawaiian shirt or his trident, but that really isn't an issue. Like we've already established, appearances aren't that important, especially with the gods since they can look however they want. The next scene is clearly Percy delivering the Master Bolt back to Olympus, and this looks to be the part of the story where he has to show the Bolt in order to actually get the Elevator Man to send him up to Olympus in the first place. Next scene here is Percy talking with Chiron, but it's in a building, and Chiron's telling him about the quest. And we cut back to the Capture the Flag game, in which Clarice has masked a few of her compadres to go after Percy with. And again, with the attention to detail, Clarice's spear is electric, 
The scene here is clearly Percy on the beach, presumably getting ready for the fight with Ares. Next thing we see is what I initially thought was the trio running through the woods, except, seeing that how there is a spirit here, this is probably the fields of Asphodel, judging by how barren it is. This scene is a little more obvious. We see Percy, Chiron, and Mr. D, except they're surrounded by what appears to be all the camp counselors, as this is clearly Percy getting ready for the quest. We also see Annabeth volunteering to go with him. Next shot, oddly enough, cuts to the trio on the beach before the fight with Ares. We also see Grover in the building with what I think is Mr. D in the background. Is this discussing the quest, or is this just after Percy wakes up? Next scene here is clearly Annabeth using her invisibility cap to disappear, except Percy has his helmet, armor, and shield, so I'm guessing that this is right before Capture the Flag. And we finally get to see Luke, giving Percy a bow to see if he's good at archery, and presumably a son of Apollo, which we all know he isn't. Also, I don't remember any Hydra targets in the books, though it is a nice detail that they have one, and one in which the weak spot is not any of the heads. And Percy's archery attempts predictably go horribly wrong, scaring a good chunk of the other campers. Next scene here is clearly Waterland in the Thrill Ride of Love. And again, nice attention to detail with the fact that the park is called Waterland, though we have a change from the book here because since the sign isn't terribly damaged like it was in the books, though that's honestly an understandable change to make for a TV show. Though it also looks like the Thrill Ride of Love has been changed a bit, with Percy and Annabeth being led on a boat ride, rather than an arena that rapidly filled with water. Though this will still work providing a challenge for a fledgling Percy who doesn't know how to use his powers just yet. Next scene here has Annabeth in armor telling Percy that he needs to find his place in the world, and judging by what she says and the fact that she's in armor, I'm guessing that this is right before Capture the Flag. Next shot we see here is clearly Percy approaching Olympus, though he seems to have a necklace full of beads, so is he borrowing Annabeth's, or is this just an unrelated necklace that he happens to have? Though it looks like we're also going to be getting some added scenes on the train ride, which is pretty uneventful in the books, but here, the trio gets attacked by a monster. I initially thought this was Echidna and the Chimera again, except when we see the end of its tail, it doesn't seem to have a snake head on it, so maybe this is an unrelated monster and Echidna isn't even here. Doesn't stop Annabeth from showing off her skill, though. Next thing we see is that the trio has in fact made it through the fields of Asphodel to Hades' palace, as we can see some undead guards, and what looks like the world above covering where the sky would be. Next shot is clearly the trio entering the Lotus Hotel, and they apparently meet Hermes there. Hermes was cast a few months ago, and he notably was not in the first book, so maybe they're just establishing him early on? Maybe he helps them escape the Lotus Hotel? Again, put your thoughts in the comments. Next couple shots we see are clearly Percy fighting Ares, and he's not doing too well as he's too far from the water. So we finally turn back to the encounter with the Minotaur, and Sally appears to be getting its attention with a piece of red clothing. Kind of fitting, since this chapter in the book was called My Mother Teaches Me Bullfighting. And we see Percy having some trouble letting go, and Sally calls back to what she told him earlier about Perseus, telling Percy that he needs to be brave. And Percy ends up heeding his mother's advice, perhaps a little too well. He charges the Minotaur, sword in hand. And again, we've got some attention to detail, as Riptide does have its signature faint glow. And closing out the trailer, we see Percy trying to get out of the Capture the Flag encounter, saying, maybe I won't even need the sword, only to cut to the encounter with the Chimera in the St. Louis Arch. Having been in the St. Louis Arch myself, I can say this is extremely accurate to the way it's lit and structured. And that is presumably the last trailer we're going to get before the show actually airs. All in all, I love everything that I see. I love the attention to detail in all the parts from the source material that matter. And even some things I didn't think would matter that much, like Clarice's spear being electrified, or the faint glow that Riptide gives off. All things considered, this trailer does a good job of capturing the heart, the action, and the humor of the source material. Only thing we can do now is wait. And with that, I will see you all on December 20th, when the series finally premieres.